I had never written a book. It was challenging, the first one. Because he wanted to be in the place of love. Somebody came up with the idea. And he was 100% accurate in his prediction. Plenty of iodine or calcium, you don't have to know any of that stuff. All you have to be able to do is chew. This book, Survival into the 21st Century. Awesome, great, wonderful. Well, then you know that it is really the most comprehensive raw food book written over 30 years ago. That's why he's known as the godfather of raw foods. Um, Victorious really um, discovered sprouting when their seeds were growing in the compost pile. And, you know, they looked good, and he was munching on them, and before long it became the Hippocrates diet. He also worked with their uh, creating seed cheese, uh, following along the lines of sauerkraut and so forth. And he really had to do this to survive himself because uh, he was really not expected to live as a child in his teen years. And as an adult, although he was very brilliant, he had a lot of extreme health challenges. And he had to leave a brilliant a career as a mathematician at Apollo and Smithsonian to find a way to thrive. And he found that way through the raw food diet. And he's an amazing researcher, a brilliant man, I think what will come through to you is how much he really cares in his big, beautiful heart. So it's my pleasure to introduce him to you, Victorious Kolhinskis. I could just go on listening to Catherine, and if I, I was just about to go to a little nap and absorb her osmotically. We have in the background, she's wonderful, isn't she? Uh, we have in thank you. We have in the background Brooks Blanchard. Uh, he's joining us for a short time tomorrow. He'll be for the full program as background music. He's a very creative artist that uh, we have had a long journey together, just like Catherine. He's pretty close to 30 years part of our family of traveling and making a difference in the world. Today's discussion. Thank you. Thank you, folks. Uh, today's discussion is going to center around the conditions of the world and best way to prepare for yourself. I am a totally a positivist, and I cannot help but being that because we live in the reality we wish to experience. Most of us, sadly enough to say, are replaying programs that have been inculcated in them, in their childhood, in their pre-incarnations, experiences that deal with pain and suffering. And of course, as has been expressed by many motivational speakers, they said that pain is much greater motivator than pleasure, unless the pleasure is chocolate. Of course, with the motivation of pain, many people have been whipped into shape and have become great organic gurus. You're looking at one of them. I had suffered and suffered and continued to suffer even after I learned all the goodies that I knew was the truth. And I totally made a commitment, a verbal one, but you know, verbal is one thing, but doing it is another thing. Don't you know that? Yeah, I'm sure you do. So I put in another 15 years of suffering after I had enlightenment in order to learn a little more details about being human. I had 10 years of bulimia, which was in itself a pretty exciting period in my life where I was able to gorge myself with all kind of delightful and less than delightful vegan dishes to the excess and of course in order not to suffer too much, only a little, and not to kill myself in the process, I practiced the old tradition that was so ever popular among the Romans. And uh, I came close to death pretty soon. And by the time the 10 years were over, I was brought into my life, blue-green algae, and uh, that acted as a sacred sacrament that was delivered by Swami Sachami who was uh, insistent and persistent at total pest, but he finally got me to take that stuff. 
I kept telling him I knew everything except how to put it in practice. And uh, sure enough, within two months, excuse me, within one month, I was actually in possession of my senses and starting to feel biologically integrated within my cerebral faculties. I did not have a, any more a relationship with food that was abusive. I got into fitness. I got back into spirituality. I got back into sacred commerce. I became more and more integrated. And through all the relationships I had over the years, finalizing with a 30-year relationship with my beloved Yukta, all of them have been my teachers and my guides, and I bless them and I thank them, because without them I would not be here, the knowledgeable person that at times I am. And what does this have to do with the real world? Well, silence and meditation and prayer are your most powerful teachers. And I have spent a lot of my time in silence. Matter of fact, for 16 years of my life, I did not speak. I watched the inner space and I connected with the source. Years progressed and I dwelt deeper and deeper into this arena, experiencing what is taught by the great masters of the human potential, all-knowing, all-presence, and dabbling with the metaphysical and the cult. But it led to insight into the, not only to the human body, the survival. It's an interesting book, Survival in the 21st Century. It is a holistic book, a really holy book, as a lot of people have said, because even though I worked my butt off to make it happen, it is not of me. I was a channel to the point where after, they say, once you make a commitment to anything, all the needed resources will start coming into your arena and synchronicity takes over. And that's exactly what took place. Like I became compulsively obsessed with trying to understand cancer because here we are, First, it was called Rising Sun Christianity, a good occult church in which we decided, hey, we're not going to go mainstream with that. So we became, after a couple years being hanging out with Ann Wigmore, we converted it to Hippocrates Health Institute, I co-founded, and we moved on with that and started developing larger and larger numbers. And one of the our clinical experiences has been the consistent successful results we had with all forms of malignancies from breast and lung cancer in a matter of four months reversal. We have right now at Hippocrates, many years, many decades later in West Palm Beach, we started in Boston, we have oncologists on the staff that are working toward putting this whole experience together and having it published in medical journals. So I wanted to understand because to me, I could not buy into that the body did anything but good. I finally found a quote that really resonated with me, which was, which was from Man the Unknown, Alexis Carell, a Nobel Prize recipient. He said, the human organism, under stress and life-threatening situations, innovates procedures that assures survival of the individual at the expense of longevity and vitality. Well, we see that operating so often enough. Can you imagine people lighting up these little white sticks and ch inhaling a fire that is 400 degrees Fahrenheit called cigarettes? And the body adapts all kind of ways. First, it feels, oh, awful, as I try to, thank you, as I tried to get into the cigarette habit when I was younger. Headaches, nauseousness, burning sensation. But, hey, I persisted because it was a social thing to do. Next thing I knew, I was doing three packs a day. So I know what it feels like. And the body innovates hardening of the cartilage, hardening of the muco layers, and creating this belt of muco progressively moving this 
tar material out of your system, and the lungs manage to survive for 10, 20, 30 years. What is interesting in relationship to lung cancer, Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, which has the largest collection of physicians, over 6,000 of them are members, and they have to, and you can find them, pcrm.org on, on the web. They have taken the posture, not only is vegan diet adequate, but anything contrary to vegan is contrary to good health. Their study showed, among many studies that they've done, that actually the impact on development of lung cancer by pasteurized dairy products, average daily intake, is much more significant than the average daily cigarette smoking. Can you imagine that? Well, that stuff is so pasteurizing, congesting, reducing your oxygen transport and causing the lungs to deteriorate and become filled with mucal matter and leading to the problems. Number one cause of rheumatic arthritic rheumatism, according to Anna Schwartz of the King Christoph Institute, is again, 25-year study published in Acta Scandinavia, medical journals it shows to be caused by pasteurized dairy products. The list is endless. If you're going to do any kind of progressive upgrade, stop dairy products. Well, with that thought in mind, namely, the body doesn't make mistakes, I started looking for, and it took close to 30 years to finally integrate it in such a fashion to show that cancer is so good for you. It's part of your immune system. And I'm gonna get, not going to go into details. The details are in survival. But I will give you a quick briefer. First of all, we're going to look at another part of the immune system called the white blood cells. Now, white blood cells increase under stress and they, import, they provide an important functions, like when you're exposed to pathogenic microbes, air pollutants, or allergens, even bad thoughts, you get allergic reactions. And the white blood cells go and attack and try to break them down, tag them through natural killer cell activity, and have them carted away by the macrophages, which are is another word for big eaters. Well, when a person is eating cooked food without enzymes, According to all the medical research, what happens is you get what is called post leukocytosis. The white blood cell count goes way up by 300%, equivalent to a severe infectious condition. And it continues on right through the meal. Now, why is this happening? <coughs> then after the meal and a few hours later, it drops down back to normal levels. The reason why it takes place is that the white blood cells, they're like little go-karts inside of your body, riding around throughout the blood vessels and lymphatic system, harvesting enzymes from the metabolic pool. And our body is an enzymatic symphony. And the enzymes are often referred to as the blue-collar workers. They're the only nutrients that you ingest that actually does work. So what the white blood cells do, they collect all the needed enzymes so that the immune system can aggressively attack whatever is the problem and correcting it. As long as it has adequate volume of enzymes, you'll see what happens when the enzyme level diminishes and becomes inadequate. If you're eating smoked food, it goes up by 500% after such a meal. If you're taking adequate enough enzymes, or you're young enough, your body is able to tolerate it. But as the years progress and you keep borrowing against your enzymatic reserves, eventually you become depleted. Now, if you are eating continuously all day long, or you're in an environment where all day long you are exposed to pollutants, as an example, what happens, the white blood cell count becomes abnormal. It keeps going up, never going down after the meals, never going down after the pollutant exposures, because it is a 24-7 up there. 
So it keeps on increasing. Week by week, the white blood cell count keeps going up. And guess what? Eventually, you reach a level. What do they call that disease when you've got an abnormal trafficking of white blood cells? It's leukemia. That's right. So normal levels of white blood cells seems to be okay, and they are an essential part of carrying on activities of the body associated with internal cleanliness and management of the pollutants that come by way of the food chain, by way of air and water, as well as your thoughts. In a similar fashion, cancer cells do the same thing, and you will see it in a minute. First of all, when your body, the work was done by John Gaynor, when your body is exposed to a high volume of incompletely metabolized protein, published in Science News 72, shows that the ability to absorb oxygen is radically diminished by as much as 60%. Well, when you reduce oxygen level by that volume, you would die from asphyxiations. Again, going back to Alexis Carell, the body innovates. And innovates what? Well, let's take a look what it innovates. Dr. Otto Warburg, Nobel Prize recipient, in 1936 won the Nobel Prize on the ultimate cause of cancer. He took normal tissue cultures of reproductive nature, put them on petri dish, which was filled with nutritional material, and put them in a glass dome from which he proceeded to remove oxygen. When he reduced oxygen level by as little as 30%, within a period of 48 hours, the cells mutated to cancer cells. Okay, so big deal. We see the mechanism right now that is engaged. Namely, normal tissues will mutate to cancer cells when the oxygen level drops and oxygen levels by 30% and oxygen level levels are influenced by incompletely metabolized proteins in circulation in the blood. Well, how does this serve your body's needs? And this is where it comes out. University of Wisconsin, they done studies and it showed that the cancer cells can absorb up to 20 times more incompletely metabolized protein, in other words, non-aminos, non-peptides, non complicated macromolecules of incompletely metabolized protein and gets it into circulation, and he showed that up to 20 times more is absorbed by cancer cells than normal body cells. Normal body cells absorb amino acids, namely protein when it's broken down completely into its basic elements, namely amino acids. But under the duress of cooking, the protein becomes disorganized, over 85% of it under the normal 400 degree temperature Fahrenheit oven temperature in survival in the 21st century, quoted from medical journals. It's incapable of being digested, recognized by your digestive system, and as a result, it becomes an allergen to your body system penetrating past the gastrointestinal lining, creating this flooding of protein fragments that are interfering with oxygen transport. So, Dr. LePage, Dr. Midler, and other researchers, guess what they call cancer cells? Protein dumps, nitrogen traps, that act like little vacuum cleaners, zooming around your body, collecting the circulatory protein fragments so that by getting them out of system, oxygen transport can take place because, baby, you got no chance. And as far as life is concerned, unless you have adequate oxygen, and oxygen is, participates in every metabolic reactions that are taking at the rate of billion times a second in your body. It's a busy little traffic jam there. 
And when you start not having adequate oxygen, you got serious problems. That's why people are just going on oxygen therapies, they can see kind of results. But we're looking at causes and final results. Some people will say, well, cancer is eating up your body, my body, everybody. Ah, cancer cells do not eat living tissues. They only eat up what is dead tissues, which is fragments of protein. It's getting it out of circulation, which is interfering with the oxygen transport. So it seems like it's eating away your body. And what is causing your body cells to die? Dr. Creole, another Nobel Prize recipient, in his book, Bipolar Process of Life, he says the ultimate cause of all cellular death is acidity. And guess what? In our culture, we are consuming minimal of 95% of the diet is of acid-producing nature. Dr. Mercola, one of these uh, most popular websites, Mercola.com, he says 95% of our food money are spent on processed foods. And if you were to look at a supermarket or Whole Foods, guess what? Only about 5% of the marketplace is devoted to alkalizing living nutrients, which is greens, which is root vegetables, which is sea vegetables, which is sprouts. Most of the fruit are acid, with the exception of melons and ripe sweet fruit. Acidifying and it's causing eventually build up, build up, eventually critical levels of shutting down your electro voltage potential of the cells. Just like any car battery, you're just made up of trillions of little cells and they're all operating like car batteries and giving you the electro voltage for your muscle. Like the highest electro voltage is in your internal organs, like the heart, the liver, the lung. That's why they can function on a 24 7. Your muscles are only good for about 16 hours of the day. They're not high in alkalinity. And those people who go around practicing, you know, raw meat eating, I see what happens to them. They get acidified because they're living on the raw muscle, the steaks and all that kind of stuff. It's better than eating it cooked. However, we're looking at acidification as another meltdown. Then there is another acidity. You heard of negative thoughts. You heard of acid thoughts, acoustic thoughts. Hey, this is more than a metaphorical description. This is real. Your hypothalamus, that little section of your brain, for every thought and every feeling that emanates out of your system. Do you realize you have a CDs and DVDs produced in your head that continues to circulate throughout your system? And if you were to take the blood of someone who has schizophrenia, as an example, someone who's making inappropriate responses to all kind of low stress situations, due to the kind of early programming and overload of CDs, DVDs of insanity that is flooding around in them. If you took some of their blood and gave an injection to another person of the same blood type, do you realize within seconds that person is going to experience schizophrenia? It is CDs, DVDs, organic compounds. Even right now, Dr. Chopra talks about the hypothalamus being generates organic compounds, which reflects the thoughts that you are thinking. And you don't have to watch yourself what kind of thoughts are running because there are only two feelings. I feel good. Oh, life sucks. I don't feel good. Most people are, I don't feel good. Around here, there's a lot of joy and happiness. Hey, why? Because, hey, you either are doing positive thoughts or charging yourself with a lot of alkaline, electro-voltage potential building so that you operate with higher brain capacity. The hypothalamus cranks out. It's part of 
the toxemia generation. That's why you experience bliss, enlightenment. Once you can clean up that bloodstream, not only of internal pollutants, but the most devastating pollutants are your brain pollutants. You realize you experience total knowledge, bliss, ecstasy, and tapping into every source of guidance, and you become at one with your dharma. Follow your passion. I recall in my late 20s, all of a sudden, the passion for mathematics, computers, was gone. And I had the courage enough to say, I'm quitting. Look at those guys, Larry Alport, and look at all these hippies and flower children having a good time, and here I am doing computer work, working with Apollo and war games and stuff like that. I don't think that's cool anymore for me. I don't have the 24-7 passion, and that's the way I was. I watched a couple people die on the jobs. We were the number one in USA. Our stock exchange went for 200 to 1 when the company was sold. We were good. Insane, but good. But I left. I left. Totally the mystery. Follow your passion. Because I didn't have any more passion for that. Just like I followed my passion of mysticism and pain in my earlier life. It's good to connect with that part of yourself. You might not know exactly, but all of us have very broad, clear cut out cycles. There's at least four major trends in your life. Connecting is through silencing and stilling your mind. Get into meditation. And meditation enables you to be better and more successful at whatever you wish to do in your life. If anything, you, you walk out of this presentation, meditation. Now, of course, there are certain biochemical support systems that can help you. Among them, over, well, marijuana was very good in the 50s, but it's kind of old-fashioned. Marijuana is an alkaloid that can get you into some really fantastic spaces, but it has negative secondary side effects that your immune system has to work its best off to get rid of these alkaloids because they don't participate in the nutritional department of your body's immune system so they challenge the immune system continuously and what is another way and what do alkaloids do they increase your alkalinity by diminishing the acidity they neutralize acidity so you become temporarily more alkaline and your electro voltage increases and your brain is on fire. Shooting, sparking plugs all over images, ideas, concepts, even such new concepts. At that time we were living in a culture that the president promised two cars in every garage and two chickens in a pot, and I think the youngsters got the idea that forget the chicken, let's go for the pot. <laughs> Enlightenment, all of a sudden they said, oh, killing is bad, let's, war sucks. No more, all this war, anti-war movement came about kids moved down into the villages and started growing their own food and they started eating their own food. Now, what is interesting about food that is out of the garden and as well as vegetarian, vegan, green vegetables, carrots, all kind of rainbow of colors and tree ripened fruit is that they are alkalizing and as a result they make you more and more and more an alkaline to the point where you're blissed out 24 7 you don't need to light up a weed matter of fact if you lit up that weed while being alkaline you know what happens you go on a bummer trip it's called alkalosis you're throwing that pH of the blood way of scale. So it leads to vegan diet, leads to continuous ever more 24-7, a state of enlightenment. I hear the sacred sound 24-7. I'm lecturing, I'm talking. It's always there with me and it's providing me connected to the source. I am never alone. 
I am at one with all, as we all will be by 2012. There won't be any more competition. There'll be only cooperation. There won't be any more singular, isolated individual beings. And there won't be any more other than vegans. Most of them will be, by that time, raw foodists. That's around the corner. That's how quick this whole thing is happening. It's an exponential psychic impact associated with the Zodiac. It's going to be like that. And what's going to be happening is, they read such a conservative magazine as Reader's Digest at your chiropractic office or somewhere like that. November issue of 1999, they said, plagues. It's not an issue of if, it's only when. And when it's going to be taking place, it's not going to be like the plagues that we're seeing every year where over a hundred thousand people die from influenza. We're going to see more like the 1918 where over a hundred million died of influenza. However, we're going to see it more like the Great Plagues of 1340, the Black Plague, where over half of the population is gone. We're looking at billions and billions of people will be gone because the immune system is so severely compromised. Yet, the Koreans, for instance, avian flu, which is, was a farce invented by the news media, anything to get a readership, they got everybody scared about the avian flu. The only people who were dying or were hit by those who were going to be dead in a matter of a year anyways. So, avian flu, they did research the Korean Nutritional Department. You can Google up on the internet. Just put down kimchi plus Korean plus 2007. You'll see all the research. It shows not only it prevents, but also cures it. Uh, Germans weren't going to be too far behind and they came up with Studies show that sauerkraut does it. As Catherine said earlier, it's in the probiotics, it's in the miso, it's in the unpasteurized tamari, it's in all the small, friendly organisms that there's over 30 of them have been identified, over 300 pathogenic ones have been identified. But they're not really pathogenic. They serve an important function in small numbers when they become exaggerated, just like cancer cells, when they become exaggerated in volume, they become deadly to your system. Dr. Williams, as an example of, uh, of the book uh, by, written by Dr. Williams, uh, um, uh, called Enzymes, the Fountain of Life, by Mielke and Lopez and Dr. Williams, the three MDs in 1994, he said that every person, that includes every one of you in the room, got at least 100,000 cancer, 100,000 cancer cells in your system. They are part of your immune system. They do good work, but when their volume becomes over-exaggerated due to ongoing insult to your body, their numbers increase to such a volume that they start interfering with normal metabolic functions. But initially they serve as a rescue team to try to keep you alive under the asphyxiation conditions created by them, by your dietary and lifestyle choices. So, bacteria cultures. How many have seen 11th hour? That's where we are. Get, get it. Get, 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 Google up, 11th hour, watch it. The time is ripe. We are at end times. Are you want to be prepared for it or you want to just expect Bush to cover your ass? <laughs> Let's hope there is an election. It will be an interesting time. The next few weeks might be another 9-11 or some other sacred number. Now, watch 11th hour. One of the interesting things on that movie is they talk about the human body, which I have been talking for years, but now here's somebody official talking about it. I says, create a friendly relationship 
a diplomatic relationship with the invisible part of the planetary habitats. 80% of the biomass on planet Earth is invisible, and these are the microbes. And you can go out and work with the germ theory, or you can try to establish a friendly relationship by getting large enough a team of diplomats inside of your GI tract that are going to take care of all the bad microbes. And, thank you, and at the same time, you are, as a creature, made up of over 20 trillions of cells of human origin, but biologically, 90% of your body is made is of non-human cellular origin. 90% of your body, it's microbial. In a healthy gastrointestinal tract, you will have up to 100 times the cells in your body you will have it in terms of microorganism. They're tiny, low, invisible creatures. Now you can grow kimchi, you can grow sauerkraut, you can take a product that I designed with Dr. Shahani, the world master microbiologist. He's published over 190 papers. And I had good fortune of bringing him into my life. And we, first I theorized, then he came to assist me in creating the proper balance. It's a product called Spectrobiotics. Even David Wolf said, hey, that is a great product, according to Catherine. It is so phenomenally well-balanced. It will lead to proliferation within your GI tract of friendly bacteria. I am available on the Internet, living and expounding, Victoras, V-I-K-T-O-R-A-S, dot org, we are handing out something also here, an opportunity. The green polka dots box. It's an alliance program. It's available till December 1st when this green foods and raw organic foods and also seeds, nuts, all of it will be available through the mail-out system. You, as an affiliate, you have an opportunity to build your distributorship basis. And for life of your clients, they will, you will end up getting a small residual for referring others to it. But it's only available, this affiliate program, till December 1st. Those who sign up will be in a position to act like wholesalers. And they won't have to store or do anything. Everything is run on cyberspace. All you have to do is get people engaged. And the prices are, for popular brands, will be 10 to 50% less on many of the occasions. And also there's free shipping. So you have actually a very no-brainer type of a situation. Finally, somebody came up with the idea. Yes, green polka dot box. And all the boxes that are going to be coming by way of UPS and others will be green polka dot boxes, <laughs> recyclable, and all that other good stuff. So join us in that exciting venture, as well as join us in the exciting venture of Simplexity, as well as please consider coming tomorrow at 3 o'clock. I'll continue on dwelling on the conditions of our times and how to prepare yourself for it because these are critical times. And you have an opportunity for being bliss or being so painful that you want an exit out. It's up to you. This is, uh, bodies are not easy to get a hold of in the incarnation sense. And once you got one, hold on to it as long as it's possible. And it's possible, as you'll discover on the next lecture and the workshop, that we are physically immortalists and we can just keep on going and going and going, continuously detoxifying, healing, rebuilding ourselves when we work with the right combination of fasting, nutrition, and right kind of thinking and feeling. I love you. God bless you. Love yourself and love others as yourself. Love yourself. Don't forget that. Love you. Cold hands up. Basically, get yourself either a hot water bottle or a good lover, and uh, you'll be keeping warm night and day.
uh, whatever it might be your preference. But on a biological level, we might consider doing, uh, looking at it from the following. It has to do with poor circulation and also inadequate caloric uh, conversion. In other words, such people usually have poor digestion. Their energy is locked up in the stomach. Uh, over 80% of the calories are not available for biological work due to indigestion. It's the number one cause for hospitalization and doctor's visit. So taking enzymes will make a big difference. And then, of course, we were made up of about of plumbing, about uh, 60,000 miles. That's equivalent to wrapping your blood vessels twice around the equator. Pretty long, long plumbing job. That's what you are. And we want to clean that plumbing uh, well, there's such thing as environmentally safe drain oil that you can buy at any department store. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I suggest that, but uh, we do have something that is a little, little better. The environmentally safe drain oil is you pour it down your sink and gets rid of the clogging of the fats and protein stucks and starch stuckness through what? Enzymes and probiotics. So what we do is... For your own body, you take it in between meals. What you take in between meals, you clean up out of your blood works that is stuck in your blood vessels, stuck in your lymphatic system. It's built up in your lung system. So the combination impact of taking enzymes with your meal and in between meals will get your circulation up. And also, I suggest drink more water and drink only warm water, never, never cold water. Heat it up to body temperature, at least, or warmer, and add into it a little hot pepper, hot pepper powder for circulation, whatever you can tolerate it. This will delay the calories, increase the circulation to the extremities. Uh, cut back on your fats, in particular heat-treated fats, which are causing the red blood cells to stick together, and as a result, they're not transporting oxygen and nutrients to the extremities, but raw fats are fine, but heat-treated fats are going to cause a lot of mischief. I could go on a lot of other overall complications, but these are some of the things that will help greatly for you. And of course, the last exercise, exercise, and more exercise. Go out for walks, minimal. All right, what's Thank your you. question? Um, is it important to uh, go to a chiropractor? Is it, Im the yeah. okay. is it important to go to a chiropractor? Uh, personally, it depends on the, on the person. I mean, if you're dating a chiropractor, I, I totally insist, keep, keep doing it. You probably are getting free adjustments in more ways than one. Uh, however, however, as far as visiting chiropractors, I, I did during, I have scoliosis, was uh, scoliosis right from childhood. Uh, due to malnutrition, my spine was much longer. It was built for a, for a larger trunk. So uh, basically, and I couldn't stretch that trunk, so my, skull, my uh, spine ended up doing little curvatures, looking like a snake. And uh, so chiropractic work has not only helped, but what has helped even more so, chiropractic, I went for two years every day, actually six days a week. They weren't open seven days, so I went six days, and I got involved in weight training, weight lifting, so I created enough muscle mass to keep my body structure aligned. Now I go see a chiropractor about once, once every couple months, uh, but I gradually diminished my chiropractic usage as I build up my more the muscular. I talked to Dr. Shanti, who is, uh, he's in his he was when I was asking him the question around 95. He still was, he was a raw foodist chiropractor and he was adjusting people 16 hours a day. I said to him, I said, 50 years ago, I said, what is the difference in how long the adjustments lasted? He says, well, 50 years ago, I could do an adjustment and the adjustment will hold for about a month. He says, right now, I'm lucky if it holds for an hour. In other words, people lack muscular tonality and they lack alkalinity to hold these muscles in shape. So the spine gets out of alignment and adjustment. You can do a lot of yogic postures. You can do many uh, things that will encourage, including the use of body ball. I use a lot of creative tools, especially yoga, body ball, as a way of daily uh, creating some adjustments. You can also do a lot of wonderful work on your spine by doing acupressure points, 
just between the two knuckles that are in the palm of your index finger over here, pressing from the fleshy portion on against, that's your whole spine. And if you have aches and pains, that's a good indication that there's a lot of misalignments associated with your spine. And these misalignments are also indications that you have problems with metabolism or internal organs. God bless you. Thank you. What is your question? Stand up. If you're allergic to gluten and you've eliminated gluten from your diet, is there something else that you can take? Supplements. Yes. Uh, gluten intolerance is very common because it's one of the most common foods that have been consumed uh, because it's the cheapest, uh, namely the grains, uh, our major portion of the diet and additions to all other foods. Now, gluten intolerance comes from proteolytic enzyme exhaustion. Uh, treat, they have been treated successfully, and uh, I've seen it in medical journals where for gluten intolerance or celiac sprue disease, often as it is referred to. Uh, they're treating it and getting great deal of success within a matter of two months, uh, which is proteolytic enzymes, uh, like the SBG Zyme Plus that you can get from Catherine or any of the girls at our booth, but that will make all the difference in the world, okay? So I'm going to go through a few things that I normally go through at the end, at the beginning. And Alina is passing out some sheets like this. And this is about something, a fantastic new company that um, Victorious is involved in starting. It's called the Green Polka Dot Box. There's a website on there. You can check it out. What's basically involved is having organic food shipped overnight to your door. So um, it's like having a farmer's market in your post office box. And you can learn more by taking a look at that. It's brand new. It's just been started up. And it's a wonderful, wonderful thing for those of us who need that service. And it's also a great way to send wonderful things to your friends as gifts when the occasion arises. Alina's also going to give out a small paper like this. Some of you already get emails from us. And you already got our free recipe book. But we used to ask for your email, and on the back there's a list of topics that you can get more information about. You just check them off. And we said, well, there's a free drawing. We're going to give away one of Victoria's books to someone. And then I said, hey, everybody can win. We give away a free book to everyone, and that is a recipe book uh, with over 60 raw recipes in it from a variety of chefs. It's really fabulous. I've had some great feedback. And, of course, you can always mail us samples, if you want to, of the great things that you've made. We're very excited. We've been involved in a company for over 20 years that has wild organic superfoods. And there have been a lot of other companies spring up through the years that, you know, are doing a lot of the similar things. But we stuck with this company because of the integrity of their products. And basically, they have the wild blue-green algae, which is the most nutritious food you can eat. Wild foods help you adapt to stress instead of get cancer or break or bend or get sick. This food has more uh, protein than beef, more iron than spinach, more beta carotene than carrots, uh, more PEA than chocolate. It's very high in antioxidants. It's high in ormus, etc. Most nutritious food you can eat. Really supplies what's missing nutritionally and energetically in your diet. We combine that with enzymes and probiotics. Enzymes and probiotics used to be found supplementing every diet in every culture in the world in the form of kombucha, kimchi, sauerkraut, miso, buttermilk. What do we have today? Pasteurized, irradiated, sterilized. So we found that this is not only a fabulous way to go raw, to normalize your appetites, to supply what's missing in your diet, um, but also to stay raw and to deal with the increasing amounts of stress that are affecting us and pollution and demineralization of food. That's on the sheet that Alina's going to pass out to everyone. Everybody can order this wholesale directly from the company. It's not something that we carry around and try to sell. If it's something you'd like to try, you merely order it at the end, and Alina and I will be here at the end of the lecture so that um, you can have it shipped to you. You just order it with your credit card. And there is a 90-day money-back guarantee. You can eat as much of it as you want. And if you decide you don't like it, you can return the empty bottles to the company with the invoice and get your money back. Um, are there some folks in the room who've already tried this when you heard us before? 
Yes, Tony, there you are. Great, good. Yeah, this stuff really works. We've been doing it over 20 years and so.